Kalo, Apoyevma, my drinks coach friends. This is a Greek show. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if you uh, got excited about the Greek shows I did last year. Uh, some of you will have seen them, some not. Um, I did three shows on Greek wines, and they've been some of the most well-received shows I've done in the 120-odd shows I've now done um, over the time that we've all been coughing and splattering at home <coughs> as it continues. Um, so... Um, one of the things I did miss out, and a lot of people that are real um, Greco-files, you know who you are, were saying, well, why haven't you covered Santorini yet? What, <clears throat> what, why is Santorini not getting a look in? Because they're so well known. Well, just to explain the question before I answer it, Santorini, the, uh, the darling resort of many upper middle class and nouveau riche uh, European families from around the world for their honeymoon destination, um, is one of the most beautiful islands in the Med. Um, it's uh, basically a large volcano, uh, which is very flat at the bottom, very, very tall at the back. Uh, it's covered in these incredible, beautiful white and blue houses. Um, it has views of the, the archipelago around. Um, it, it is everything that everyone says it is. It's pure paradise. Um, the soil is black. Uh, it's black volcanic soil. Um, you can go out a pair of Timberlands and come back wearing one sock. It just destroys shoes. Um, and uh, um, recently, a friend of mine, Andrew Johnson, uh, former CEO of Armit Wines, where, as far as I could tell, he was basically uh, employed by the Italian government to drink the surplus of Grand Cru Barolo, which clearly they must have had. Or something like that. But he's now the big man at Woodwinters and buying some really beautiful wines. I saw that he was talking about Assyrtico. Assyrtico is um, the grape variety which um, has made not just the island of Santorini, but the wines of Greece, despite having made them for thousands of years, an international diamond. Um, and uh, I said, can you send them in and I'll do a show about uh, Asitico, because then I get a chance to try this new producer, which I've not tried before. Um, but also it gives pe me the chance to explain quite how magnificent this variety can be. And I would go as far as to say that it's the best white grape variety in the Mediterranean um, and makes the best wines, possibly, in the whole of the Med, and that's not just calling, not, not just Greece, but when I say Med, I don't mean hardly Italy or anything, but you know, the, the burgeoning new area where we're coming back to old countries and they're, and they're being revitalized, like the Balkan states, like Lebanon and so forth. Um, and the whole idea about doing those shows back uh, last year in October were to show that, that Greece hadn't lost its touch. It's just that we can't read Greek. So it's very difficult to sell Greek wines on the European market when all the labels are in modern Greek. So uh, without further ado, here are three wines um, from a producer which I'd not come across before. Uh, and Andrew assures me is one of the greatest producers on the island. Um, and his name is Artemis Karamologos. And uh, Karamonigos, Senor, uh, Senor Artemis Karamonigos, um, has levels of, of quality, but starts actually quite high, quite high up the pay grade. Um, I think at this point, I think it's important um, in honour of a lady, Mary Pateras, that we shout out this lady, Mary Pateras, who, um, along with Steve Daniels in Obbins, uh, before they changed hands many years ago, who took the bold move of wiping out an entire section of what was probably probably belonged to Spain or France before, and bought 40 or 50 Greek wines and said, look, we should be looking at this stuff. It's insane that we're not. Uh, and the wines he was showing then were brilliant. But the wines we're looking at now are way better than those wines were. Um, back in the 70s, a family of merchants and wine growers that have been very successful in Greece since the, the late 19th century, called Butari, um, kind of put the world on the map. They were making a wine called Butari Santorini, which was made from this variety, Assyrtico, I sold it in Odbins, it's not Odbins, in Waitrose for four ninety nine, because it was like pushing water uphill, you know, weird great variety, Greece, what is that, Retzina, you know, um, no, it's not, and we're going to see that in a minute. So, Andrew, thank you very much for sending these wines in. No money has changed hands to promote Wood Winters, but I think they're a really good business. Um, and I'm hoping, if actually Andrew watches this, uh, that he'll send me a bottle of Yeringberg Chardonnay 2018 to put into my up-and-coming fine New World Chardonnay show, because I tasted it this morning in a Yarra Valley seminar from Australian Chardonnays, and it was utterly, utterly delicious, and I'd love to show that on show. Um, so, without further ado, Greeks, 
Greece's greatest white grape variety, Assyrtiko. If you go back to the other shows and you put in Greece, the drinks coach on YouTube, you will see uh, in the white wine shows that Assyrtiko is mentioned, but I didn't do any Santorini Assyrtiko from this island where you've got the magic of this variety mar married with the magical um, climate, um, the fierce winds, the aridness, the volcanic soils, and it produces something really extraordinary. Um, you can buy... Um, I think still entry level, so to speak, Assyrtiko. If you go to Waitrose, they often sell Hatsidakis at around 11 or 12 pounds. That's where it's starting now. So now it's already being taken very, very seriously as a variety. Because if that's the cheapest one you can find, poof, I mean, you can still find £3.99 Chardonnay, right? So look at this one. Uh, this one is the first one in the lineup. Uh, we're just calling it 2018 for the sake of argument. And this is a wine which is made using stainless steel. Um, it when the, It's been picked from parcels of vines all over the land, all over the island there are there are many many tiny pockets that have different uh, results um often very similar soils but also but, but very very different climatic conditions in terms of wind and temperature and so forth these wines are mixed expertly together by Artemis Calamaros and um they are made into a wine which is then left on on its lees on its yeast cells uh so stainless steel pristine mineralic crisp steely um but given the the tools to grow okay so this is a wine that's 2018 which by all accounts everywhere in the med was venus hot in 2018 so this comes from a very warm vintage but where they're stuck in the middle of uh, the mediterranean sea you've got winds that kind of exacerbate the main problems of high temperatures on this island so even in very very hot years you get wines with wonderful acidity and steeliness so let's have a look lovely color it has this kind of steely silver white that you only get from really really cool barrel fermented wines normally it looks like chablis basically oh <laughs> wish i could suck wish i could read greek it's covered in all the different places it's from there's a bit of another variety we'll even here called atiri de idani um I, I wish i knew what the influence was uh maybe i can work that out from what's not a city okay When a Sirtico is young, it's a bit like Albrino from Spain. Um, any, if anybody's, unless you've had your head buried in the sand, if you like wine, you won't. You must have come across um, a, um, Albrino by now. Northern Portugal or northwest Spain. It's a white variety which kind of is has the aromatic touches of things like Viognier and very aromatic Sauvignon Blanc, but it has a texture and a salinity. Um, what makes Citico so divine is even without the incredible soils they have in Santorini, it has a wonderful saline, tangy, almost lick your lips saltiness to it, which is just unbelievable with olive oil and clams and squid and, and langoustines and sea bream. And, it's just made for fish. Um, you, you just want to put it on the fish. You don't need to drink it. It's like a seasoning. Um, oh, I can imagine garlic and coriander and parsley all tossed together and some slips and that slip clams. This wine's already three years old, so we've gone past the primary point where it's very aromatic and fruity. And we're getting what I love to call the dried herb stage. And there's definite flavours of dried thyme, almost sage, um, sort of almost... Uh, I don't like the taste of dried basil, but it's kind of like a withered, dryish thing. And underneath that, you've got a lovely layer of beeswax and honey, which comes from the layering of the lees and so forth. Um, quite delicious wine uh, and a delicious price point as a result. Um, this is where he starts at the wonderful price of 23 quid. So uh, if you haven't heard about this then, then and you continue to ignore it, then the wines are just going to get more expensive. So I suggest you go out and buy some now and taste these. But if you wanted to, have, to do something very special for your loved one and you wanted to have a nice dinner and you were going to cook a Dover sole or you're going to cook some shellfish or even just get some oysters in or something like that, then, then do treat them to a Sirtico. And on the basis that Artemis, Karamonagos and uh, Andrew have sent me these samples, do check them out. Okay, so moving on. This wine is called Nick Terry. And Nick Terry is two years older. So we're now 2000 
16, which if I remember was a very good vintage. Beautiful, cool climate, long uh, summery grain period, but I, I don't imagine they have many really terrible vintages in Santorini. Uh, when you look at the colour, it's still the same colour. It's maybe very, very slightly more burnished, slightly deeper in colour, but not really. If somebody told me that that was a uh, five-year-old white wine, I'd say, well, it has to be white burgundy. It can't be anything else. So um, that's prestige just by looking at it, okay? Oh, my goodness, that smells amazing. <laughs> wow. Okay, right. See, because I was wondering, like, this is 23 quid, and this is £31. Pounds. I'm going, I do hope the £7 pounds is worth it. It's not just a kind of slightly better one, old vine. No. Well, it is, and it's from a much, much more rigorous selection of sites. Um, but it's also um, has seen a little bit of oak. Some of it's gone into some barrels. Um, m almost inert. Some new, few, a few new barrels but mostly not new uh, so the wine's had a chance to to really l lose its frippery and its precocious primary fruit and become a genuinely complete and mature wine it's the puppy fat the juiciness of a young wine's gone so now it's sleek um it has the most extraordinary smell Ooh. it smells like vine leaves and a beautiful Cretan young peppery olive oil and there's it's not aniseed but it's something smoky like that uh, maybe caraway almost I can imagine this is absolutely stunning with gravid lax with marinated salmon I can see that being the perfect match That's the most interesting white wine I've tasted this year so far. Okay, that is big, big words, by the way. I've drunk some pretty cool shit so far. And I wouldn't bat an eyelid paying £31 for that wine. That feels like the wine, the the, the right price. Um, some of you out there won't have ever tried a wine over 15 or 20 quid. Um, sometimes it might be worth just doing it once, just to see the point. I suggest you start with that one. Okay, so God knows what this costs, because I went on the website and it's not on it yet. But this is a 2017 Santorini single site, single vineyard. Um, and I imagine one of the really spanky, very special vineyards um, in the lineup. So I'm kind of assuming, although I might assume wrong, that this is uh, Artemis Karamonikos' flagship wine. But there may be a range of them. Um, I'm sure Andrew will be able to let me know in due course. And I'll put the details in the bio below. 2017 vintage with the wonderful descript the wonderful quote pleasure has no relish unless we share it virginia wolf um never a, a truer sentence spoken so this wine's a year younger than this 17 yeah I'm, don't i really can't pass any comments on vintage temperature or quality <laughs> okay right i was sniffing and looking for things and suddenly um if anybody saw my Cote de Vence rosé show about um uh, close sibon's tiburon and i was trying to explain the difference between just merely great and grand i mean great wine um great very good wine has a sense of, uh, of familiarity it feels like it's close up and detailed like I think I described it as a Madonna record. Kind of sounds like someone's whispering in your ear. But grandness is like a mountain in the distance. They look the same size, but one's big in the distance and one's close up. I'm not going to quote Father Ted, but it's kind of that, if you know what I mean. So, incredibly ripe. Oh my God. There's a level of sweetness here I wasn't expecting. It must be high in alcohol. Let's have a look here. Thirteen and a half percent. But what can I say? Absolutely fantastic. I imagine for that kind of precision, you're going to probably have to pay, if this is £31, probably 40 maybe more. Very rich, very grand. Begging for something like turbot in a cream sauce, something really, really serious. Or lobster, I would say. But it's almost as rich and as fat as a... Alsatian Pinot Gris. So, just to recap, 
First one, not there yet. This has got time to go. But coming back to it, very, very primary, very steely. The middle one's got it all going on. This is the one that's complete. Um, it's kind of reached its destination, and I think you should drink it now. Most extraordinarily complex wine. Flicks of banana and um, kind of resin from the oak, but all that lovely heathery dried fruit and honey and beeswax that I talked about when wines get older from this variety. And then this last one, weirdly unevolved. You've still got some of that really tropical fruit, but in the mouth it has this enormous expanse of flavour. Uh, a very, very different wine to the other two. It just shows you how much character this grape variety has. So there you have it. A Sirtico, Greek's finest grape variety. See you next time. Thank you.